بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسوله وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا مزيدا إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We're all familiar with the term Tawbah when one repents to Allah But there's another very similar term called Inaba A term mentioned in the Quran many times And since it's Ramadan we want to move from Tawbah to Inaba Ibn Al-Qayyib said it's to hasten pleasing Allah while continuously and repeatedly returning to Allah at all times. Meaning it's tawbah, but continuous tawbah. Part of inaba is to retreat to Allah with your heart, with love, with reverence, with sincerity, in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. Just as one retreats in the last 10 days, i'tikaf of Ramadan, he does i'tikaf, leaving everything behind. Inaba is constant returning in i'tikaf to Allah. A heart needs to retreat to Allah because if it doesn't do so with Allah, with honor, it retreats with humility to other than Allah. Turning fully to Allah in trials and the ease is inaba. A person who is munib is one who repents when he commits a sin but goes further beyond that to change and become an in constant contact with Allah, with a relationship with Allah. Allah said it about Ibrahim السلام, in Surah Tud, Inna Ibrahim ala halimun awahun munib. Ibrahim was without a doubt, forbearing, halim. Invoking Allah with humility, that's awah. And munib is repentant, constant, time and time and time again and again, constant repenter to Allah. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا The most hopeful verse in the Qur'an. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسِّمُوا لَهُ A verse considered by some of the ulama the most hopeful verse in the Qur'an. O ibadi, my slaves who have transgressed against themselves, transgressed, my slaves who transgressed, the ones who commit sins, despair not the mercy of Allah. Verily, Allah forgives all sins. He's the oft forgiven and he's the most merciful. After repentance, Allah mentions وَأَنِيبُ What we're targeting. Inaba is three levels. The first level is the root of Inaba. The principle which is leaving shirk to Tawheed. Leaving kufr to Islam. Not having this will make one a kafir. Because it's leaving kufr to Islam. That's the first level. It's taken out of the verse. The second level of inaba is the inaba of al muttaqun al muttaqin the pious. Leaving sins and committing and doing deeds. Whoever doesn't have this one, he's Muslim. He falls under Islam. But we fear hell over him because he has sins and unless Allah forgives him. And that's taken out of the verse in Surah Ghafir. قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا In the following verse after. وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابُ ثُمَّ لَا تُنْصَرُونَ The third and final level of inaba is the level we're trying to target this Ramadan. The inaba of the muhsineen. The peak. Complete turning to Allah in your heart, in your body, constantly returning to Allah again and again, all times in all situations, being in complete submission to Allah. This is the best form of inaba. This is the inaba, inaba of Ibrahim alayhi salam. This was the level of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Inna Ibrahim la halimun awahumunib. And it's also mentioned, wa ma tawfiq illa billah alayhi tawakkal tu wa ilayhi unib. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said, the people of this level are the most people. Uh, uh, tested by the shaitan because they're the best and the shaitan wants to get the best off track. Look at the master of humans, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The imam of all imams. The master of the repenters. The master of the worshippers, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, Wallahi ni la astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk kulla yawm in sab'ina marra. I seek forgiveness every day in Sahih Bukhari 70 times. And then Sunan al nasai a hundred times. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whose past, present and future sins are forgiven and he repents and asks Allah for forgiveness between 70 to 100 times a day, how many is guaranteed that he's forgiven? How many times should we ask when we're not guaranteed forgiveness for one of the hundreds or thousands of sins that we committed? Sins harden the heart. So repent to soften your heart. It's a disease. ثُمَّ قَسَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ ذَلِكَ فَهِيَّ كَالْحِجَارَةَ أَوْ أَشَدُّ قَسْوَ Even harder than rocks. Not even as hard as rocks. Harder. Sins darken the heart, so repent, 
so you can cleanse your heart. There's no better time than these blessed days. Allah said, Kalla barrana ala ma kanu yaksibun. That after that placed on the heart, it becomes time, it comes time where you need to wash it out. Awn ibn Abdullah said, there are those who are the ones, the ones who are constantly repentant to Allah are the ones you should always be with because they have the softest heart. Repentance is a great bargain with Allah. Look at the deal you strike. You make a mistake. You transgress. You repent. You correct your future. All your sins are forgiven. And a big baggage more. No one forgot to stock up this Ramadan on food and groceries. And if they did, they go prepare for it at Maghrib. But what about stocking on istighfar and tawbah and good deeds and repentance? Ya Rabb. يا رب إن عظمت ذنوبي كثرة فلقد علمت بأن عفوك أعظم إن كان لا يرجوك إلا محسن فبمن يلوذ ويستجير الآثم يا رب إن عظمت ذنوبي كثرة فلقد علمت بأن عفوك أعظم يا رب يا رب O oh Lord if the greatness of my sin increases then I know your forgiveness is even greater إن كان لا يرجوك إلا محسن فبمن يلوذ ويستجير الآثم. If only the righteous call you, then who would the sinners like me go to? أدعوك ربي أدعوك ربي كما أمرت تضرعا فإذا رددت يدي فمن ذا يرحمه. I call on you, my Allah, as you ordered and commanded with humility, with reverence. And if you turn away my hands, then who else is going to accept from me? If you turn away my hands, then who else is going to have mercy on me? If you turn away my hands, then who else is going to forgive me? مَا لِي إِلَيْكَ وَسِيلَةٌ إِلَّا الرَّجَى وَجَمِيلُ عَفْوِكَ ثُمَّ أَنِّي مُسْلِمُ All I have is hope in you, Ya Allah, in hope that you will re uh, forgive me and that I am a Muslim. One of the most popular questions I get on this matter of repentance and inaba is... Uh, I repent, and then I do a sin. Then I repent, and I do a sin. Now I give up, and I despair. That's Allah talking to you. Did you read the Quran? Allah is talking to you, calling you. Ya ibadil ladina asrafu ala anfusim. Allah said, He didn't say, Oh, you believers. He didn't say mankind, as many times in the Quran. He didn't say muttaqun. He didn't say the pious. He didn't say the muhsinin. He didn't say the forerunners, the sabiqun abil khayrat. He called on the sinners not to despair. Asim ibn Raja said Umar ibn Abdul Aziz gave a speech one time and he said, Oh people, if you fall in a sin, then repent. And if you do it again, repent again. And then if you do it again, repent again because the sins enclose on the next and they are a destruction. And the peak of destruction, the destruction of all destruction is, repent, is remaining on sins, persistent on them without repenting. In authentic hadith in the Tirmidhi, in the hadith al-Qudsi, O oh son of Adam, as long as you call on me, I shall forgive you of what you have done and think nothing of it. You're dealing with the ghafoor. You're dealing with the rahim. You're dealing with the afu, O son of Adam, even if your sins were to reach the clouds in the sky and then you were to come and say, Oh Allah, forgive me. If you say, Oh Allah, forgive me and you ask for my forgiveness, I would forgive you and think nothing of it. Ghafoor, rahim, afu. That's what you get out of the qualities of Allah, what you know about Him. O oh, son of Adam, if you were to come to me with sins nearly as great as the earth, and you were to meet me after death, now making any shirk, I would bring you forgiveness as great as the earth, and think nothing of it. In Sunan al tirmidhi Ibrahim ibn Shayban said, there was a 20-year-old young youth that he knew. The shaitan instigated to him that you're young. Why would you repent right now and leave the pleasures of this life? you got a life long ahead of you. So he went back to his sins in his old ways. In the midst of the sins, he had a flashback to his old days with Allah. A believer is still a believer. When he, even when he come, uh, during sinning, he still has la ilaha illallah in his heart. So he yearned and longed and began to cry and weep for these days. He said, will Allah ever accept from me? Then he heard a voice. It's himself talking possibly to himself. He says, you worshipped us. And we, th and we thanked you. You sinned and we gave you respite. You come back and we'll, give you, we'll accept from you. If you repented and got fooled by the shaitan, return. Don't be ashamed. Don't despair. When you continue to repent, it's like a wrestling match with the shaitan. Every time you repent, you've pinned the shaitan down in one. You're the champ. Once you despair and stop repenting, the shaitan became the champ over and you don't want that. Don't be surrenders. 
Don't be surrendered to sin. Accept continuing sinning and being on the wrong path. Resist and struggle the sins. Maybe one of your shouts to Allah and repentance will be so sincere that He will write you among those swayed from being in Jahannam and, onto, and take you onto Jannah. How can you think in despair in Allah with all these ayat and hadith? When He's asking you, why is He asking you to repent when Allah doesn't need me nor you? He's independent and sovereign. That's al Rahim. That's al Ghafoor. That's al Afu. You're dealing with one more merciful than your mother. Wallah al Azim. In Sahih 